let's look at some quick fire responses uh, to to perhaps arguments that are thrown at Christians around this issue. So first one, what would you say to someone who says, "Well, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality, Glenn?" That's the problem of argument from silence. Jesus yeah. never said a whole lot of things about a lot of stuff. As I say <laughs> in the book, he never said anything about stiffing a waitress on her tip. But <laughs> there are indications in the scripture that that's not a good idea. I turn that around, Brandon, and ask, um, but what did Jesus say on sexuality? What was the sexual ethic that Jesus taught? And it's very clear what that is. Number two, do the scriptures really condemn homosexual acts? Or is this just like uh, the prohibition on eating uh, shellfish? You know, things have changed. It's it's just a law for a time and a place. Yeah, talking about shellfish, I like to say that argument is just a shell game. <laughs> um, as I was telling somebody even today, you know what? Unless you're N.T. right, you know, it it just doesn't, serve you well to go head to head with the theological revisionists on what Sodom is about, what Romans 1 is about, what it's, I think you can make that argument, but it, it, unless you're the president of a theological seminary and you just have that weight, right, mm -hmm. you're not going to win that. The thing is, is, and, and they present those arguments just to create dust yeah. so that nothing ever gets resolved. You know what? Look at what Jesus said in Matthew 19 when he was asked about divorce. Divorce is the question of marriage. Marriage is the question of sexuality. He sends his listeners right back to Genesis 1 and 2. What is the design? Yeah. The design that God has created is a man and woman married for life, raising their children. That's the foundation of family, culture, everything. I mean, it's very clear in there. And it's interesting. I mean, I've read nearly all of the theological revisionists, and not one of them deals in a serious way. They may dabble with Genesis 1 or 2, but they never, they never deal with the description in Genesis 1 of 2 of what God's actual original design is. And so, I mean, I just say, you know what? Um, yeah, argue all you want about all those verses. Argue with Jesus. What is it that he said about sexuality? It's a, it's a good response because it's interesting to me. I think I often see a pattern in, in the way that people will attack this from outside is they will say, first of all, they'll try and quote from Leviticus and then say that doesn't apply anymore. And then uh, when you point out perhaps that uh, the New Testament also has things to say about same-sex acts, they will then try and attack the uh, legitimacy of, of Paul, who, who's talking about those things, you know? And so you do get yeah. caught up in circles, right? And the, and the question there is, okay, tell me what the consistent, unquestioned teaching of the Christian church has been since Christ's walk on earth. You know, it, there's just no question about that. There's no debate about that. And so if these people are right, basically Christians since Jesus's time have gotten the issue of sexuality wrong. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's just completely unreasonable. And they're just depending on their own cleverness, their own sleight of hand, if you will, to try to change the discussion and change the debate. They're arguing against you know, 2,000 plus years of consistent, strong, clear Christian teaching. And that's just a terrible uphill battle. The other is, there is no scholar, there is no scholar that is a theological revisionist that I have seen, and I've, I've read all of them, that either themselves is not gay or lesbian, that doesn't have a very close family member or loved one that has come out. There is no scholar that has just, you know what, I'm going to just open up the scriptures and just see what God's word reveals to me. There is that, that, that internal motivation to justify this thing so that they don't have to feel bad about themselves or about a loved one. That's very significant.